Welcome to the What to Watch video. Every week I do a number of different videos. I do a daily video, a weekly video, an intermarket analysis video. Then I do a deep dive video where I go through charts that maybe I didn't talk about all that much. And then the very last video now is what I call the What to Watch video. These are the things as of Monday, April 8th that I'm really focused on and I'm I'll present both a positive side to things and a negative side to things, and then we'll see how things play out in the early and then latter part of the week. The idea behind this video is it is updated at least once a week. The idea also is that I update this on an as-needed basis. However, since I started doing this video, I have not seen a need for this to be updated more than once a week. But if things really shift, if we see a big change, either positive or negative, then I may end up doing an update of this video. The first area that we want to look at are the positive things right now. And I have a whole list. I'll first of all explain the different things that are positive, and then I'll have the charts behind this to back that up. The first thing is that the markets are anticipating rate cuts to be slow. That's a scenario that the market has adopted now for the last couple of months. They tried to adopt it last October. It went into December. <clears throat> then we started to see a bit of a change in that scenario. Now the market is going back to that scenario, but there's some doubt that is coming into this scenario. Some of the economic reports that have been coming out have been stronger than expected. Some Fed officials have been coming out and saying, well, maybe we're not going to cut rates in 2024. And that has the market pretty confused right now. And it looked like we had been shifting over to an environment where commodities may do better, where value can do better, <clears throat> in addition to growth. Now we're going back into this, okay, what's doing better, growth or value? If growth's doing better, that's more positive. If growth is falling back, that's more negative. And we're seeing interest rates continuing to go up. And so what the market thought was a Goldilocks environment is now kind of shifting around. And it changes all the time. This week is going to be an important week. We're going to have CPI and PPI coming out this week. That's what set this whole string of doubts in motion about a month ago. We'll see if anything gets more clear going forward from here. Also on the positive side, when you take all the technicals together, all of our charts, we're still positive. But at this point, we are seeing some weakness. Now, right at this time, it's just looking like a pullback. We had a down day on Thursday. We were able to recoup a lot of those losses on Friday. We're still looking okay. But at the same time, the market is at a tipping point. We could still drift over and go, go more negative from here. The S&P is still above long-term resistance. That's the 5110 to 5111 level. We got close to it. We came down below 5200, but then we were able to get back above that on Friday. We're still above this long-term resistance, which may end up acting as support if prices decline. We're still in an uptrend. When you look at our moving averages, now the short-term trend, if you've watched some of these videos before, those lines are not relevant now the really sharp upward trend that we saw, we have pretty much worn that off and I'm not even showing that chart right now. But when you look at all of the different moving averages, we're still going up. The S&P is back above its 200, excuse me, it's 20 period moving average. It did fall below in Thursday's session. It was able to get back above that on Friday. That's positive. Then intraday growth to value ratios are showing some improvement. The only problem is our end of day charts are showing some weakness. So we're seeing a little bit of contradiction there. The bullish percent index for the NYSE, it's holding up. Yeah, it was down a little bit. It's not extreme positive, but it is still positive where we're looking at the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100 actually looking more negative. When we look at the QQQs or the NASDAQ 100 or NDX, the trends are still positive. We did go below the 20 period moving average and we fell down to the 50 period moving average on Thursday. We were able to get right back up to the 20 period moving average on Friday. This is part of the tipping point that I'm talking about. 
And also when we look at the QQQs or NASDAQ 100, we're still above very long-term resistance. And we're also looking at the QQQ or NASDAQ 100 ratios are still holding up for right now. Here's the chart that I've been showing for quite a while that the market has adopted this idea that the Fed is going to cut rates slowly. They can adjust things to what's happening economically. And when the Fed is able to do that, that is positive for stocks. Now, there's even some question coming in that, are they going to cut rates at all? Okay, we had some Fed officials come out and pour some doubt on that. Then we do have these stronger than expected economic reports, which are pushing interest rates back up. At the same time, if we have some kind of really big event that comes into the economy somehow, whether it's a catastrophe or some black swan event, that's going to push us down to where you see the orange and the green lines. And that means that the Fed may need to cut rates because of something drastic that has happened. And that tends to be more negative for the market. And it's kind of logic that plays into that one. <clears throat> this is a weekly chart of the S&P 500 showing the pivot points. And we're still above this R1 level. We didn't get all that close to it. We did drop below 5,200, but then we closed just barely above 5,200 on Friday. Right now, I'm still calling this resistance. But we're going to see. If we do start to fall further from where we're at, Will this area end up providing support? We may just slice through that and keep going. We may come down to this point if prices decline and then try to stage some kind of a bounce up off of that. This is the 20 period moving average study. We did fall down below it after Thursday, but then we will we were able to get back above both of the 20 period moving averages in Friday session. And I plot both a simple and exponential moving average on this chart. Then this is the intraday look at large cap growth versus large cap value, a 10 minute intraday chart where the green line, excuse me, the blue line is on top and the red line also it is advancing. But when the blue line's above the red line, that's showing that growth is outperforming, even though these are on different scales. Also, when we look at a growth to value ratio intraday, looking at 10 minute, a 10 minute chart on the S&P 500, we are showing some improvement here. So growth is, in the short term anyway, starting to outperform value. That has been positive in the past. When we're shifting over into this declining interest rate environment, that scenario has kind of been put on the back burner. Now, if we're going into more of a, maybe we're in an interest rate environment that's not as friendly to the market, then we're going to be keeping a closer eye on the growth of value ratios. Then we look at the NYSE bullish percent index. This measures the point and figure buy or sell signals in the NYSE. We're above 50 and positive. And even though it declined a little bit, it's still looking positive overall. When we look at the QQQs, this is the ETF for the NASDAQ 100. We came down to the 50 period moving average and then bounced up off of that. And notice how we closed right at the 20 period moving average. This is part of the tipping point that I'm talking about. The market really hasn't decided what it wants to do here. Are we going to break above the 20 period moving average or come down below the 20 period moving average? But when we look at all the trends, we are still positive. The blue line's above the red line and the red line's above this other blue line. This is a 20, 50, and 200 period moving average. Long term, a weekly chart of the NASDAQ 100 going back to 2009. We are still above this long term trend line for right now. When we look at the ratio between the NASDAQ 100 and the Dow, we're still right around this really high reading where we were at back in 2000, where we were at at the end of 2021. We went above this a little bit, came down below it. We're just right around this level right now. So for this point in time, this is still holding up. If this really starts to decline, that's going to turn things much more negative. Here's a similar look, the QQQs, which is the ETF for the NASDAQ 100 against the small caps. We are coming down a little bit with the ratio, but we're still very near these high readings. Now, if we continue to fall, that will turn more negative. If we go back up, that will turn things more positive. Now we look at the negative side, and the list is kind of long. Sentiment is now, when you take it in the context, it's starting to fall after being extreme positive. The point and figure chart, and I've been pointing this out for a few weeks, 
it's still looking quite positive. In fact, maybe too positive. It's giving us an extreme positive reading. Accumulation distribution is showing some weakness. It's right on the moving average right now. And I'll have charts to show you of all these things. The check and money flow, as well as the check and oscillator, they are negative. And accumulation distribution and the check and money flow and the check and oscillator, these take volume into their calculation. And they're also supposed to give us an idea of what the smart money is actually doing. So if these are going down, that's a warning sign to us. The vortex continues to be positive. The green line's on top, but it's still drifting lower, even though it did tick up in Friday's session. The momentum oscillators are turning negative. Now, we've been flatlining and going sideways after being extreme with these momentum oscillators for quite a while. They're moving average-based, and when you start to see flatline, and then that gets into your calculation, these can't help but start to decline. But this can also be a self-fulfilling prophecy. Folks see these things starting to roll over. That produces sell signals or folks that start to short the market. We are looking at the 20, 50, 100, 200 period moving averages. These are possibly showing some weakness. The parabolic SCR, a week ago it was positive. It has now turned negative on the daily chart. It's still positive on the weekly chart, which I won't be showing in this video. Then our end of day growth to value ratios are declining. Where we're seeing a bit of an improvement intraday, that's not really bleeding through into our end of day charts. Discretionary and staples still declining overall, not really breaking out and actually showing a bit of weakness. The McClellan oscillators, which are more short term, and these are momentum oscillators, and the summation indexes, which are longer term, they have now turned negative, not only for the S&P, but also for the NYSE. The NASDAQ 100 bullish percent index has now gone negative, and the S&P 500 bullish percent index is declining after giving us an extreme positive reading. The indexes, and I'll show you this as I go through some of the charts, we are at some tipping points. We're right at places on moving averages or right on either support or resistance levels that still have yet to be decided going forward. The 10-year yield is rising. That is causing some problems for stocks. And the U.S. dollar index has also been going up. It's in an uptrend. That's also pressuring stocks. Okay, here's our fear and greed index as measured by CNN Money. We had been getting a really high reading, above 75. That's when it starts to get extreme. Now we're starting to come back down. Now we did tick back up in Friday's session since we had a pretty nice bounce. But if you take this overall, this is still looking more declining than advancing. Now that could change. We could have a solid up day on Monday or Tuesday, and this could start to go back up. We can only go with what we're seeing right now. Then we look at the point and figure chart where we see a lot of X's here. That means an awful lot of point and figure buy signals have been generated inside the S&P 500. And in fact, this is so high that we're getting a warning sign here. It's a long, tall up. And that was generated way back on March 7th. So this has been around for a while now. The market hasn't really reacted to this. It's reacting to other things, but we still want to be aware of this. Yeah, and here's accumulation distribution. We had been climbing up above the moving average, going way back to the end of October into November. Now we're starting to drop below the moving average. We came back up, now we're going below. Now we're right on the moving average. So this is one of the tipping points. Chicken money flow, starting to decline as the S&P was going up. That's a negative divergence. What was interesting here is we actually looked more positive after Thursday's decline and then we bounced up on Friday, and then this ended up going down. So it's actually kind of going against what you would think would happen here. But this is actually turning more negative. Another smart money indicator. The Jacob oscillator also is below zero and declining. That is negative. Then we look at the vortex. The green line is on top, so that's positive. It is turning back up, but now we're below this one level, and we're, we've been drifting lower as the S&P has been going up. And that's just showing another negative divergence. Then here are our oscillators. And they've been just go treading sideways for quite a while. And so they can't help but start to roll over and start to go down. But we're seeing that pretty much across the board. What I have here is a couple of short-term oscillators. Then I have three intermediate-term oscillators. Then at the bottom, I have two longer-term oscillators. And these are pretty much all declining now together.
Then we look at those stocks above their 20 period moving averages inside the S&P 500. We actually dropped below 50. Now we bounced back a little bit on Friday. Can we keep going up and show some more improvement to this chart? But overall, to have this drop the way it did is not necessarily a good thing right now. When we look at the 50 period moving average study, we are declining even though we did tick up on Friday. We're still looking okay when we look at the 100 period moving average study, but we are declining. And we're still looking okay with the 200 period moving average study, but we're pretty much flat after giving us a very extreme reading, we have been coming down. Then this is the parabolic SAR. I treat this as one of the more important intermediate term indicators. When the dots are underneath, that's positive. Well, we switched over and for the last four trading sessions, the dots have been on top. That has switched now to negative, but the weekly chart is still positive. Now, when we look at end of day growth to value ratios for the small caps, we are showing a decline here, even though it barely ticked up on Friday. We ticked up a little bit with the mid caps, but it has been declining. We also ticked up a bit with the S&P, but this has been declining. We want to see follow through upside to have this turn more positive. If we continue to go down, naturally, that would turn things more negative. Then discretionary. We look at the ratio on the bottom where it is still in a longer term uptrend, but it has been trailing off with discretionary not performing as well as staples. And a lot of this has to do with weakness that we're seeing in Tesla. Then here's the S&P McClellan oscillator. This is short term. This actually went extreme negative after Thursday. Now it did bounce up, but when it's below zero, it's negative. So we're going to have to climb all the way back and get above zero for this to turn back positive. When that's negative, when we look at the summation index, which is more intermediate to longer term, that means that based on price, we're now declining and we're declining above this extreme reading that we've been given. We're also declining when we look at volume. So we're seeing confirmation here. Then we look at the NYSE McClellan oscillator. It ticked up on Friday, but it's also below zero. That's negative. So now we're starting to see the summation index for the NYSE based on price, as well as volume begin to decline. Then here's the bullish percent index. When we were above 70 and still going up, that was positive, but now we're starting to drop down. That is turning more negative. And if you wanna get really technical, that's an actual sell signal. We would turn negative if we come all the way down and drop below 50. We're not there yet, but we are declining. We need to see some improvement on this chart. This has already turned negative. This is the NASDAQ 100 bullish percent index. And these are where those Magnificent Seven stocks are at. This is where a lot of the strength has come from. Now, as the S&P has been going up, we've been seeing a negative divergence with the bullish percent index for the NASDAQ 100. We've actually dropped below 50, turning negative. We're able to bounce back up, but now we've dropped negative. We were up on Friday, but this was still down. So that is not really positive. Now, here's some of the tipping points I'm talking about. This is the Dow. The red line is the 50-day moving average. We closed right on the 50-day moving average and we closed right on this pivot point. We're seeing a real convergence here. That just means that the market is kind of indecisive right now. It could go up and show some improvement. It could go down from here and show some weakness. Now I can say that any day here, but to see this on this index and then other indexes that I'll show you kind of brings everything together. Here's the NASDAQ, where we're right at a pivot point. We're still above the 50 period moving average, so that's positive, but we're right on this level. And these tend to be pretty significant, especially for the NASDAQ and the NASDAQ 100, which is the next chart. We're also right back up to the pivot. Now we came down to the 50 period moving average, bounced up off of that, but right now we're right back to this pivot point again. The mid caps just a little bit underneath this pivot point, still looking okay longer term. The red line is above the green line. We're, and this red line is the 50 period moving average. And so we're still holding up. We just wanna see, can we break above this pivot point or are we gonna come down and actually test this 50 period moving average? We are concerned about the 10 year yield right now. It has been going up and it's really been spiking up. Now we've been chopping more or less sideways here, but if this continues to go up, this is putting some pressure on stocks. The dollar also is in an uptrend now and also putting some pressure on stocks. So thank you. I really hope you found this helpful. Please feel free to check out the other videos that I post. 
I hope you're having a very nice weekend and I will talk to you in the next video.